finally reached the ring, and he too beat Dak with stars and stripes. There's his record, and it's uh, somewhat controversial, if only for the fact that on many people's uh, agenda, he is only 32 and 0 with the one no contest, of course. Because that last fight was declared no contest later by the New York State Athletic Commission after originally Camacho Jr. had his hand raised. Eric Jacobowski, on the other hand, uh, is a guy who comes from a fighting family, was a very good uh, amateur fighter, has uh, not fared nearly as well as a professional. 21 wins, he's got eight losses, he only has four knockouts, not a real threat to get anybody out of there, I don't believe. Right now, let's go up to Sean O'Grady, who was in the ring trying to grab a word with Junior. Sean? Petra Camacho. You know what? Kind of a mundane entrance tonight. You usually uh, explosions and all kinds of things going on in the background, but tonight you're going out trying to connect with the fans. Are you trying to give a project a different image? No, as you mentioned, I want to get back, you know, to the crowd, to the people, the fans, the supporters, and people who viewing. Don't go anywhere. My fans. It's junior time. You know, you have a lot to prove in this fight. A lot to prove coming off your last fight. You have a lot to prove. David Reed tried to prove some things. He got himself in trouble. Why are you going to be successful in proving that you are dur durable and you are tough and you have a lot of courage? So stay tuned and watch. Junior time. All right, junior time. He says he's going to put it together in hopes that he doesn't have another pusillanimous effort. Guys? All right, thanks, Sean. Thanks to Junior for taking the time again, working the room still, pressing the flesh. Here's the tail of the tape, and uh, as you can see, Jakubowski at 28 years of age, five years older than Hector Camacho Jr. Again, you just look at records, and you look at age, and you look at experience in the ring, and you gotta say, this is junior time. But we've already seen a major upset. Let's see what happens over the next hour or so. With that, we take it to the center of the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the beautiful Belterra Casino Resort in Belterra, Indiana. It's time for the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by America Presents, in association with Let's Get It On Promotions. Tonight's action is sanctioned by the Indiana State Boxing Commission. The chairman is William Kelsey, commissioner in attendance, Jacob Hall. Our judges scoring tonight's action from ringside, Gary Merritt. Blake Allen and Larry Bennett, and our referee in charge of this bout. He'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Bill Page. All right, fans, here we go. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled in the super welterweight division. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Belterra Casino Resort, it's time for Sunday Night Fight's main event of the evening. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red and blue trim, hailing from Wedding, Indiana, he weighed in at an even 150 pounds. His record stands at 21 wins, 8 losses, with 4 wins, coming by way of knockout, introducing Eric Jakubowski. his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner in this 10-round attraction, wearing red, white, and blue trunks, hailing from Bayamon, Puerto Rico. His weight, 152 pounds, his record, 33 and 0, with 18 knockouts. He is the WBA's number one super lightweight contender in the world, introducing Hector Macho Camacho Jr. Once again, it's Bill Page, our referee in charge. Now to give instructions, 10 rounds of boxing schedule. You received your instructions in, in the dressing room. Remember when I say break, both of you, quit punching, take a step back. Any questions? That's close. Good luck, guys. There's supposed to be one man with each fighter in the center of the ring. There were six with Camacho yeah. down there and two with uh, Jack of Oz. And they still left about five more in the corner. There is uh, Hector's wife and his daughter. She doesn't play the camera as well as Hector does. This She's very good audio-wise. I did a radio interview with Hector last week, and he uh, she cried through the whole interview. That's, that's the background. <laughs> Round number one. Hector Camacho Jr. goes out to touch gloves and then swings with the left hand. 
and you see that sense of tone. Jack Kapowski, a good boxer. He uh, likes to use the ring. Fights in, you know, pretty much a conventional sense, uh, Barry, for a guy, you know, his size. And he's a leader in there. He's been in against uh, some very fine fighters, but he has not been able to beat the very fine fighters. All of his victories have been accomplished at the expense of club fighters. And every time he does step up, as you said, he's, I believe he's 0 6 when he has stepped up through that higher caliber. He's, he's lost fights, for example, against the Khalid uh, Rahilo, who was a WBA uh, champion. He lost to Jeff Mayweather, one of the fighting Mayweathers, Arturo Gotti, that time. So he's been in with good people, just hasn't been able to beat the best. Hector Camacho Jr., we know what's at stake here for him. Basically, his reputation, the very damaged reputation as a result of the Leha fight. That's what he's trying to overcome and start repairing. The rehabilitation of that the reputation begins here this evening. And he always talks about fighting at that super lightweight 140 pounds. And that is a terrific division, and there are a lot of good fights in that division, but the bottom line is he came in here at 152. Now, that's two weight divisions higher. Good job of jabbing to the body by Jakubowski. His brother, Marty, was a guy with about a zillion fights, fought everybody, got a couple of title chances, couldn't cash, cash in on those. The really ridiculous thing is that Eric Jakubowski's first loss in the ring came against his brother. That's right. He actually fought his brother, Marty. Fought him under an assumed name, actually. <laughs> Very flashy in the ring. He can punch hard at times. Defensively, he's been pretty sound. And as we mentioned so much, uh, just trying to repair an image that has been damaged uh, so badly by the uh, Jesse James Leha fight. Boy, I, you, know, you see that screaming headline in KO Magazine calling him a coward. What could be a worse thing to be called as a fighter? Yeah, absolutely. It is a macho sport. And uh, he belies, it belied his nickname that night, perhaps. Number two. Macho not moving a lot in there. It may be a response to his heavy weight that he is going at tonight. At 152. He's fought as high as 150 before. 149, 150 a couple of occasions. But really, I mean, he shouldn't be fighting this high of weight. I think about a year ago, they were talking about him actually dropping down and challenging for a white belt. That's what I was just going to say. You always talked about that. Sean O'Brady has uh, joined us ringside here. And uh, 
Hector seemed loosey goosey as he always does. Very loose, very confident coming into this fight. But I'm going to tell you something. Eric Jakubowski is very difficult to look good against because of all this movement. What Hector wants to do, and you guys talked about it, you talked about it earlier, what he wants to do is land that one big shot for KO. He tried it right there. But on a fighter like Jakubowski, that's very difficult to do. Look at what Jakubowski moves to. He's moving to his left, an unusual move for a right hander, but he circles away from the power of Hector. I think he's been shaking a little here, Barry, in this uh, round by a couple of high punches from Camacho. Good one right there. Long and lanky. Camacho says, in the ring, my style is just like my dad's, but with more power. This is his best punch. He's a straight left. And there's a uppercut left from Camacho. I think that's probably accurate. I think he does have a little more pop than his dad. Yeah, I would agree with that myself. I, I think at times, though, he disdains it as he did in the, a couple of those fights uh, prior to the Le Corsier fight when he went up to those really kind of just very, very whole home type uh, uh, decisions, the wins over Joe Hutchinson and Ray Martinez. Those were not uh, spectacular fights in which he flashed the power. Jakubowski says in the ring he is a good boxer, doesn't try to get in there and slug. There's a good right hook to Macho, right on the chin. And behind the left hand, actually. Camacho's thinking strictly power tonight. Stuff that he's throwing is getting in. Sure, well, he wants to have a spectacular knockout. What he needs, what he's looking for. Coming to the end of round number two. This fight has been pretty much controlled by Hector Camacho Jr. We'll be back. Performance in Indiana, about 45 minutes from Cincinnati, Ohio. Barry Tompkins, Rich Barada, Sean O'Grady telling you about it. This is our main event, Hector Camacho Jr. and Eric Jacobowski. Round number three, and Camacho has controlled the first two. Camacho just kind of looking to load up here in this fight. There's the flashy combination that sparked him, not only sparked his career, but his dad's before it. He's kind of hot shotting Jack. Uh, shotting Jack Kabowski in the first couple of rounds. Started this round a little bit more on the gas. Oh, I hear that voice. I think well, it's hard to escape. <laughs> He's a macho man. Papa, a little more pressure from this son. Nice little smile from Camacho. He is very relaxed in this fight. Well, he should be. Eric Jakubowski, 21-8, four KOs. He weighed in yesterday at 149, Jakubowski did, after eating, he said. Jakubowski found out about this fight one week ago. But you know something, I'll tell you about these Jakubowski kids. You guys know too, they can go the rounds. They're, they're, they're tough, they're durable, they're survivors. Jakubowski, this one, Eric says, I'm a road warrior, I've been a victim of bad decisions. He's fought uh, five times in Europe, he says he's very difficult to get wins on the road. But he's never fought a left-hander. Made a bad decision in his last fight against Mark Riggs. He stepped into a punch and he got knocked out. And he said, it just out of nowhere, I got a nail. He said, no excuses, I trained five and a half weeks, I was really prepared for that fight. He said, he just clocked me. Mark Briggs has done that to a lot of people, 18-0. Yeah, very good across the time they fought. He's as tough as John Riggs. Or oh, Bobby. Hector Jr. took a little look at his dad. His dad was yelling up uh, some instructions to him, and then Jr. did pass him a glance here on his side. Right hand slipped in there in close quarters by Junior. Oh, these opponents are so hard to face because they, they wrapped themselves in that shell. How do you get to get out of that? You gotta hit him when he's punching. Well, I asked for that. Sometimes you have to take a shot or two. I asked him about how he wanted to fight Jack about me, and he, he said, I want to be right on top of him. Yeah, that's what he's doing right here. He is, but Jack Bosley is getting his shots in. Oh, Bosky just stepped back into the deep breath. And the three. 
Jr. did a little fishing too, and he came up with the big one. Let's make it official now with Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 53 seconds in round number four. Our referee in charge, Bill Page, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout and still undefeated, Hector Macho Camacho Jr. So Camacho runs his record to uh, 34 or 33 and 0, depending on which uh, <laughs> which one you want to look at. And uh, I would hope an ultimate date with Jesse James Lehock. Yeah, I think they have to do it again, uh, Barry. There's been too much lost in reputation for Camacho. I'm sure Lehock would like to make that money again, and Lehock's very confident he can go in and, and win the fight. So uh, I think it would be, uh, the fans would uh, love to see them two get together again. I don't think there's any question about it. Let's go to Sean O'Grady with the winner, Sean. Thanks, guys. Hector Camacho Jr., it's junior time. What did you what did you show us tonight? I just came in, like I said, I came in to do my job. I came to work on things I've been working in the gym when you turn away to my child and have fun and get a win. In the back of your mind, Hector, did you have it all Jesse James Leha in there? You know, at first I did, but when I step in the ring, I know it's business. And I got Eric Jakubowski in front of me. Leha, when you Jesse James Lester, when you're ready, the, the fight night in the court, the fight is in the ring, when you're ready. You know, that's the only way to resolve this e issue. I think a lot of people, were, I, could, I could ask you questions all day about this fight, but everybody wants to see the Leha fight. How close or how far away is that fight? Well, I said that leads to the best promoter in the world, Matt Tinley, the America Presents, and our management team. Come out to senior, strong the energy, the new talent, and let them take the rest from there. My job is to fight. Business at hand, this fight tonight. You turned it up in that fourth round. What, what were you thinking whenever you decided to go in for the knockout? Now I'm just taking my time to work in the shots of him. Daddy wanted to get quirk. I know, you know, I was going through the war. He wasn't much of a puncher, so I thought I could bang it out for him. Even though it's not my style, but I could do it. What did this fight do for you, Hector? Well, I built my confidence back up. 
Which is that was not down the beginning. I knew but I knew better than that. Hector Camacho's always have good confidence. <laughs> I want to give a special thanks to Bashi and you. When I get ready, when I get home, have that food ready for me. How many more fights? How many more fights? Here's here's Papa in here. Papa Hector Sr. What do you think of your son's performance tonight? And is this a, a uh, reputation building or rebuilding of, of your son? Well, not really. You know, I thought that he made the right decision on the Leha fight. You know, he was up for, he was up front in points. You know, uh, the the rules were set to him. You know, if any any accident headbutt between six rounds, he was just smart enough to catch up and take uh, advantage of the opportunity. And he he realized that he couldn't see at the time. Uh, however, I know a lot of fighters would have continued and gone on. In fact, watching your career, you know, watching your career, I know you you, you fought a lot of times. Let me talk to, to Matt Tinley in here. Matt, Hector, Hector Camacho Jr. Can, can fight a lot of fights. He can stay busy, stay active. But you know,